Hey everyone, and welcome back to Don't Open That Door. I am the unsuspecting auctioneer, Justin. I'm the rear view mirror, Dan. And I'm the mirror image, Nico. Oh, mm. well, we have a treat for you guys today as we're reviewing Oculus. Directed by Mike Flanagan, it stars Karen Gillian as Kaylee Russell, Brendan Thwaites as Tim Russell, Katie Sackoff as Marie Russell, and we've also got Rory Cochran as Alan Russell. So it's, it's a family Russell affair. Family. Oh. So this film is actually based on an earlier short film from the director. I think it's from about 2006. It's called Oculus Chapter 3, The Man with the Plan. Um, I'm not making that up. That's the actual name of it. So one thing kind of before we get started on the summary here, this movie is actually told in parallel timelines, right? So mm. it's told kind of, It's does it start in the present or the past? Uh, it's both because it's a dream what happens in the past it was all a dream but it's not exactly real right i was gonna say that's a trick question because everything starts in the past but in any case <laughs> um, you stupid motherfucker so this oh movie basically God. tells the story between i think it's meant to be like uh the early 2000s and then um like 2012 or 2013 or something like that relatively current days yeah, we've got Tim and Kaylee, and they are the Russell siblings. Now, Tim's been, well, as a child, they moved into this really nice house with their parents. They had a kind of idyllic family. They had a beautiful house. It was a really nice house. I want that house. I um, also want that yeah. house. They had a dog. Um, everything was cool. You know, everything was great. Unfortunately, the mom, I think, wanted to bring in some antiques into the house, and so they brought in this mirror known as the Lasser Mirror, I believe. I thought at first they were calling it the Lesser Mirror, and I was like, shit, for a Lesser Mirror, it was causing a bunch of trouble. But no, it's the Lasser Mirror. They also didn't really know that, I mean, this mirror has a massive backstory and history that you find out yeah. later in the film of just destroying lives, destroying people, just making them lose their minds and do all types of crazy shit. So, Nico, things start to escalate in the house, you know? I mean, what's it like? How does that work? So, you know, they, they just keep stubbing their toes in, on the furniture and it just gets really annoying. And that's about all that happens. Nice. True facts. No, really, though. Everything just really, it's a slow process. It is a, it, it's kind of a thing where it's like a creeping death. There is plants start to wither. People start noticing or people, the family starts noticing like, oh, why aren't the plants like just, you know, um, blooming or whatever. I don't know why I can't think of plant terms right now. I'm not a plantologist. Um, there's a better word for that, I realize. Anyway, um, yeah, mom, mom and pops both lose their minds. The dog dies. Or Does he die or does he disappear? I can't Dis remember. Disappears. Yeah, he disappears. Um, it is highly implied, though, that he was somehow poisoned or sickened by the mirror. And just over time, you begin to see the that the only two people who are truly sane or arguably sane are in fact the siblings Kaylee and Tim. They're the only ones who are, and we're getting their perspective here. We, we get to see what they see as sort of just like foils to the chaos that is unfolding from within their father's study where this mirror really lies and is corrupting the family. Eventually, you know, the, the dad, I guess the culmination of the childhood incident, right, is when the mother, she loses her mind based on an affair that she thinks her husband is having, which is really just a hallucination set up by the mirror, correct? Yes. Yeah. And so then I guess she tries to strangle Kaylee. And I think, I don't know if it's in a moment of lucidity or if it's just driven by the mirror. The father shoots her. And then I guess he kind of, I guess, is about to shoot then Kaylee when Tim comes in with a golf club or a fire poker or whatever, smacks the gun out of his father's hand his father like temporarily regains i have, i'm assuming temporarily temporarily regains some form of sanity yeah. and then he actually pulls the trigger off the even though tim is holding the gun his father gets down on his knees and pulls the trigger for him so that he dies because maybe he on realizes himself. what he's done yeah right. exactly so that happens in the past and as a result of that and that fractures the mirror key point when he falls back key point indeed so the police show up, they separate the children, they take Tim to a psych ward 
where he spends the next 10 years. Kaylee basically gets put into the foster system. She does pretty fucking well for herself, all things considered. Mm -hmm. She does pretty fucking well for herself. So 10 years later, Tim is released from the psych ward, basically nothing to his name. And his sister Kaylee's like a pretty big member of an auction house. I mean, she clearly has a pretty nice life set up for herself. But where Tim kind of dedicated the last 10 years to erasing what happened to them, Kaylee's been obsessed with it. So she kind of, you know, comes up with a plan and, you know, she goes to get her brother. And almost as soon as she gets him, she's like, well, we're going to keep our promise. We're going to destroy that goddamn mirror. And Dan, you know, what does she do? I mean, I know she brings the mirror back to their original parents' house, but what does she try and do? Like, she has a setup, right? Yeah, so she is trying to clear, like Justin said, clear her parents' name. So she actually has cameras set up everywhere and a whole, like, timer contraptions and I can't remember exactly what, but it's every fucking elaborate. Yeah. It's like every 30 minutes, this timer goes off to remind them to drink water. Every 45 minutes, this timer goes off to remind them to eat food. Every hour, her fiance is supposed to call her on the hour and things like that to help keep them sort of awake and, and lucid. And she's got like three or four different cameras. She's got temperature tracking devices to monitor temperature in, in, in all the rooms. Uh, and she even has a dog and plants. So basically her... <laughs> Which we'll get to. <laughs> yeah. So basically her plan is she's going to film what happens and film the fact that over or hopefully catch over time the plants dying and the dog disappearing and all these things that the the mirror does to help prove that you know, her parents or her father especially wasn't a murderer and that the mirror is the one doing all of these things. So, of course, her brother, Tim, thinks she's kind of crazy but kind of plays along with it for a little bit. And then slowly things start to kind of go bad. Well, well, at first, nothing happens for a while. And then at one point when Tim is convinced that, no, this is not going to happen, they realize that, they left the room and came back and the cameras now are like pointed directly at each other instead of at the mirror. And they go back and watch the footage. And while they were talking, they were like moving all the cameras around and everything, which they don't remember doing at all. And then from there on, things kind of devolve a little bit. The plant starts dying, temperature rises. They end up releasing, Tim ends up releasing the dog because he thinks it's kind of crazy Tempers flare as well. They start to kind of get infected by the mirror and start yelling at each other and doing all these kind of things. Hallucinate, see a lot of things that aren't actually there. And as part of those hallucinations, in as the film kind of builds and almost kind of climaxes, we get to, I guess I would say a part where they are almost, the two timelines almost merge, right? They're paralleling each other, at least. Mm -hmm. Like they're analogous to one another, the events that are happening. Right. And I mean, like, you know, we, we see events that kind of transition seamlessly from, oh, this happened when they were a child. Boom, this is happening to them now in reality. You know, sometimes they are kind of hallucinating, thinking, you know, that they're children or whatever. And like, it, it's a pretty cool effect. And kind of the, the big moment in the movie is when the mirror lures Kaylee over by trying to, uh, you know, make it seem like her mom's trying to give her a hug. Meanwhile, Tim who is at this point in time more in control, he runs over because as Dan was describing, there was a timer. So that timer, there was another timer also attached to a massive, almost kind of like giant blade yeah, that, that would part. swing down from the ceiling. Um, every, I think it was a like, yacht anchor or something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it was, but it was massive and it was going to smash that mirror. Now she had a, a reminder basically to remind her to reset the timer on that thing. Mm -hmm. Because if for any reason, one of them didn't reset the timer on it, it would trigger and smash the mirror. So all that happens and Tim runs over and smashes the go button. So the anchor or the blade comes down and then he sees Kaylee was standing in front of the mirror the whole time. And um, I mean, the subtitles say like wet sickening thud or whatever when it stabs her. So the cops come and he's arrested again in a direct parallel to when he was a kid and he's screaming that it was the mirror that did it. And the movie just kind of ends there. As he's driving away, he sees his mother and father's spirit like he did when he was a child, but this time he also sees his sister's spirit. 
And there are other spirits that we see, and I feel like it's almost implied that those are the spirits those are the of other like victims. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that the that the mirror is kind of like tainted. So let's go ahead and break this down a little bit. In terms of the visuals, Nico, how do you feel about the visuals in this movie? It was fairly you know, it definitely wasn't like it didn't set out to be the most visually impressive movie. The majority of it took place in a house, that kind of thing. Right. So how do yeah. you feel about it? No, honestly, I, I really dig it. And I adore the seamless transitions and the cuts in this film just because the way they set up the theme of the the sort of like parallel timelines and the way they transition between the two with going like having the younger version of one character go up the stairs and the older one come down the stairs and just stuff like that. It's all just so smooth, so clever and all the table dressing and stuff is right on par where it should be. You know, the color grading was really good. The lighting was really, really well done. They set the atmosphere really well too and they don't go over the top either with any of the the gore or with any of the the scares this isn't like a uh, you know spooky house of jump scares affair yeah and I, I also want to give props to like the film crew and everyone because oh yeah the you know the centerpiece of this movie is a mirror so i would imagine that if you're filming a movie about a mirror and have a giant mirror it's yeah. probably hard to hide cameras and stuff because the mirror is reflecting your stuff, right? No, for sure. So, like, I'm sure they had to do some creative thinking and creative ways to not get their their camera and the film crew and everything in the shot with the mirror, like in the mirror. So I, I don't know how they did that or some editing maybe involved a little bit too. I don't know. But that that's low-key a little impressive. What if What if they had, like another mirror facing that mirror oh. and they use the camera to like record it that way. Oh, mirror reception. I mean, they kind of do that in the film and like, I'm sure we'll talk about this at one point, but, um, and maybe that points now, I just, I really love the, the blocking and the way that the, the actors just position themselves when they are doing this or rather when the film is doing the reveal for the first time when they've, you know, officially been bamboozled and it turns out they're the ones themselves who are being manipulated into sabotaging their own designs with capturing the machinations of the mirrors. And I just thought that was extremely clever the multiple ways in which that's revealed Mm -hmm. true i mean well to two of your points first i'm going to take that phrase machinations of the mirrors and make a metal song about that later Um, yo real shit though but uh, also but also um you mentioned that this might be the point where we talk about kind of the mirror stuff it's not so dan in terms (laughs) of the music yes in terms of the music how do you feel about that i liked it i'm gonna be honest with you I didn't even think about the music. Like I couldn't even Agreed. tell you what the music was. Agreed. Like, and that's good. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And I mean, like I knew you're going to ask me this question. So for the last 30 seconds, I was thinking, wait, <laughs> what was the music? What did this sound like? <laughs> was there even music? Which I'm sure there was. There and was. I, and I mean that in a good way too. Like Nico said, like it's, it accentuated the film without getting in the way. So I think I liked it. Yeah. I was going to say, I, it was very minimalist and Mm -hmm. I appreciated that. Not every movie has to be like, uh, not even to just call it a random thing, but like a jaws or a, not the conjuring insidious or something else like that, where like there's a lot of music involved Mm, when the terrors happen. I think sometimes it can also be equally effective to have it be a little more softer, softly spoken. Definitely agreed. I did. I did quite like that. But Dan, I mean like the, dialogue the voice audio and the dialogue and everything else like that seemed good to you all sounded great cool 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 so now in terms of the ending let's go ahead and spend two seconds talking about that so not a happy ending um the people don't win they don't ever manage to catch anything really on record that suggests the mirror is possessed the daughter you know kaylee dies and i mean tim is arrested a second time he's most likely going to go to jail now or be committed to the psychiatric ward for life. So, I mean, how do we feel about that? I like the ending. I mean, I think it's a fitting ending for for what the movie is and, and what the mirror is. Because, you know, one thing we didn't mention was at the beginning of the of when 
Kaylee starts to film everything, like in the modern timeline, she begins the film by talking about all the history of the mirror and all the people that it has led to influence and in killing or whatever. Um, and there's like a long list of people that it's killed. And, you know, she had mentions like, yeah, this person tried to stop it. These people called the church and called the priests. And this, you know, every time people, or not every time, but people in history have tried to stop it and they have never been successful. So, you know, this was like sort of another chapter in the, the history of the mirror, you know. They tried to stop it and prove that it was a malign spirit or something and malignant, not malign, malignant spirit. And, you know, they failed. And I, I think that was a fitting ending. Nico, I choose you. I mean, I, I fucking love the ending, dude. Like, I am just going to throw my cards down on the table and say that I really fucking dig this movie. I love how they play with the sort of like the duality of the, the timelines. And I really think that this this isn't a feel-good movie by any any means and it no, is probably not a feel good movie. <laughs> no, I might have to I might have to not call it. Yeah. That. It is not at all a feel good movie, but it it's a feel cool movie. Like oh, you, you think so? I think so, man. Like you're sitting back here and like just getting to connect those dots of everything, how it's just that we have the theme of, you know, trauma and abuse, particularly inherited trauma and inherited fam familial abuse. And I, I just think it's so fucking cool to see how it's a cycle. That's exactly what it is. It's a cycle every time. And we can see the parallels coming and how they're established and you know there's a, a pretty notable music youtuber that i follow his name's adam neely and he, he talks about in music theory that repetition legitimizes and in composition and stuff too so like if something sounds a little strange the more you hear it or something sounds a little just like off the more you hear it the more your brain sort of starts to contextualize things and that's exactly what oculus is doing it is legitimizing itself by showing the different avenues in which the mirror has corrupted them across the multiple timelines and i don't think it could have ended in a different way i i fucking loved it what do you think justin I actually liked it a little bit less than Nico, but I actually liked it a lot less than Nico. Um, yeah. I I didn't I didn't really go for this one this ending at all. I mean I agree that there doesn't always have to be a victory or or anything else, but I don't know. I think it was kind of mean for for Tim <laughs> it wasn't to fucking nice <laughs> for like for Tim. I mean I never call I never. I definitely wouldn't put this down as a as, as a friendly movie for sure. Um, it's not a feel good hurt movie. feelings <laughs> hurt feelings were in the room. But like it's not no, a good I, time, y'all. I mean, no, it was basically um, you know, Tim getting sent back to the psych war just felt messed up or jail or wherever he was gonna end up going. Although if I was his attorney, I would argue that they have all the footage. Trying to, he's trying to, yeah, I know, right? Like, why would you just go post up in front of the mirror? Yeah. But anyways, past all that, I just I don't know. I almost felt like knowing all that stuff about the mirror, I almost feel like they, they, they should have done more. Like she should have, I feel like they would, they should have done more. Like, cause there was a point in the movie where she was like, we should stick together. And he was like, yup. And they don't, they just go away from each other right after that. I and think I they like, try to, and they meant to, I think they just like literally couldn't, it already well, had yeah. power over them. But that's, but that's my point though. Cause remember there was like, she had a system worked out where like, she was like, we are good to be in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then he immediately leaves to go outside. I mean, like, hey. Right after that. And I was like, bro. So I mean, true. But at that point, he doesn't really believe. I can't quite remember when that happens. He either doesn't believe or is just now starting to believe it. I mean, true. But she, she knew. So like if I was her, I would have taken more precautions because she seemed to be like super prepared, super yeah. ready to roll. And she there was, was another, there was a weird thing where she was like, there's no electricity. And then she was like, all the cameras are on their own internal circuits. And then the power goes out and she's like, oh, we have no electricity. And I was like, wait, I thought that was the point. But I don't know. Well, the um, cameras were I, still running. Well, yes, yes, yes. But I mean, like, I could have sworn she was like, it's very imp important that there's no electricity. No, not that there's like, no electricity, that some of the backup plans 
don't rely on electricity. Yeah. And so she was prepared when the electricity went out. They, she had all the backup plans there. She had all the, the lanterns. And like she said, the, the cameras didn't rely on electricity. The timers didn't rely on electricity. Okay, I'll have to double check that because I could have sworn there was something else she said about there being like electricity around it or some, something else like that. I could have sworn, you might be right, but I'll have to go back and double check that because I could have sworn there was something else about that. But in any case, yeah, that was my feeling on the ending. I didn't like it so much. So another thing that I wasn't necessarily feeling 100% through, which I disagree with you, Nico, on, is the time swapping. So, Dan, let me go ahead and get a fresh, neutral perspective. How would you feel about the uh, time swapping back and forth throughout the movie? I liked it. I thought it was done Fuck pretty yes, well. Fuck yes, love you, Dan. I, Let's do it. Let's I, do it. Two I dug one. it. Oh, this no, is, I dug this it. is how I live. And Dan, I want you to know I'm giving you the predator handshake right now oh, thanks. emotionally. Thanks. I want you to know Fuck I'm the predator. You, bro. I'm the predator. <laughs> I'm about to gun you both down. Uh -oh. So let's go. All right. Let's why? go. Why? Because I'm the predator. <laughs> so go ahead, Nico. How do you feel about the time swapping? You fucking asked Dan. I did. You, you know how I feel about it. Oh, you like it? You like that time swapping? Yeah, yeah I like the fucking time swapping. What you going to do yeah, about You like the time swapping? No, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is getting <laughs> weird now. <laughs> <laughs> no, so anyway. Okay. What, if you had to coherently state it in a couple points, how do you feel about the time swapping? I thought it was well done. I mean, I thought it was cool. Like, I think the, the two different times were very clear that they were different times. There wasn't like a, wait, which time are we in? Is this this one or this one? I liked how at the beginning, the time swaps were disjointed is not the right word, but they didn't necessarily coincide with, with the two times didn't coincide with each other. But as the movie progressed, like Nico had mentioned, they, and, and you too, Justin, they kind of overlapped near the end. And, and you saw like the same kind of things, like one of the characters in the, current time would walk up the stairs and they would also show them as a child walking down the steps and you know concurrent things happening between the two time zones and it overlapped cool and I, I thought that was a very cool build from the beginning of the movie where the two times didn't quite really line up like that and ex and how it explained the story too and then at the end how it all kind of lined up got you so nico i'm assuming you concur with a couple points dan said there Oh, yeah. No, I, I concur with a couple points that Dan said there. I, I just think that the the lengths that they went to to, again, just repetition legitimizes. And I, I think that they really did a great job establishing the theme through the parallel timelines. But again, that's just my opinion. You're goddamn right. Let, let this be legitimized. It is just your opinion because it's wrong. Not playing. Right, so, so um, just <laughs> Hater, let me put on my hater boots. But no, so how I felt about the time swapping is this. I think I liked it. So I'll start on a positive note. Uh -oh. I liked it in the climax of the movie when the slipping back and forth was almost seamless and we were seeing all those parallels and we were kind of almost like I was watching one thing as an adult and then the adult would see a hallucination and then all of a sudden we'd swap back to the kid side of things. I thought that was really awesome. So then, wait, what was different about the end that made so, it So I think... Worse? Just the I, pacing? So, yes, but also... So I think during the beginning portions, the way the time swapping was working out was a little... Dan said disjointed, and I'd probably have to agree with that. I mean, to be honest with you, I felt like it cut tension sometimes, and it cut suspense, and it... For me, it just cut any kind of build in the movie at times because we would go from like a cool scene, you know, there was a scene I think where the, in the current timeline where Tim uh, noticed it was either Tim or his sister noticed that some of the plants were dying. And in fact, it may have, may have actually been Kaylee who pointed it out, but mm. um, they noticed the plants were dying. That was a cool kind of like, Oh shit moment. And then they kind of flopped back to the past again. And it was almost like when we were removed from that scene of tension it just kind of, for me, evaporated. And then we kind of had to start building again from I, a different side of the fence. I see what you're saying. One of the reasons why I did like it, though, is because that's it showed, it did a very good job of showing and, and making me feel what they felt, too, because that happened to them. I, I kind of took it that, especially Tim was reliving these memories because Tim had sort of forgotten 
throughout time and throughout his therapy he and always everything. processed through therapy and stuff. Right. And so whereas Kaylee remembered pretty much everything that had happened and believed all of that, Tim some forgot some of it and the stuff that he did remember chalked it up to, oh no, that was trauma. That was my mind trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense or whatever. And so, you know, sometimes when they would cut to a memory, I took it as, well, that's actually what's happening. Tim is Tim or Kaylee are actually right now le- reliving these memories. And then all I, I, of a I, sudden I, when they wake up and when they, the alarm goes off and they come back to, they're just like sitting in the bathroom or like they're just outside. Oh, like who knows where they are and they don't know where they are, what they're doing, you know, to the point of cutting the tension or they would discover something and then immediately go into a different, different flashback. I feel like that's kind of what happens to them. They would think about something they'd go, Oh shit, the mirror is, is doing this. And then they would get taken over by the mirror not taken over, but you know, influenced and then they would kind of have to kind of go through that process again each time. And that's very reflective of a like a trauma response in your brain, which I think it's really cool that Brendan Thwaites character, Tim, the brother actually sort of like hints at at the beginning, how your brain starts to sort of like make things make sense on their own as a coping mechanism. I I think there's a lot of I, I think you're right on the money there, Dan. So, I mean, he might be right on the money, but unfortunately, I'm not a fan of the currency. I um I see what you're talking about. Okay, that was like a seven out of ten. I, 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 I mess with it. I see what you're talking about in terms of a story writing perspective. However, and this is a completely kind of separate note. Last night I watched a movie where the story kind of took a backseat to the visuals. Mm-hmm. I think in this one, the I didn't. I felt like the storytelling kind of took precedent over for me the pacing. I think pacing and tension for me are super important in horror movies. And of course, for, for me, it just it didn't strike the balance correctly. Perhaps an alternative might have been to, you know, kind of start where they did with Tim getting released. And then maybe when he goes back to the hotel room, kind of like he did, he remembers some stuff. But maybe if they could remember more or larger chunks or maybe if the mm-hmm. times when they remember it had just been switched around a little bit, that might have made it more feasible for me. But as it stands I just kind of felt like there was too much back and forth, too much, you know, like, oh, this is happening and then this is happening. And like, also, I will say as well, as it was part of the back and forth a little bit, they they wanted to pursue or they kind of pursued a plot line for just a little bit where Tim was questioning his sister's sanity, right? Right. I almost felt like that was a waste of time because- while I understand that the character Tim would have wanted to do that, I almost feel like from the audience perspective, we already know what it is. Like we already know that this this is not how it's going to be. I just felt like they spent a little bit too long on that. And I would have preferred if maybe a flashback would have cleared that up quicker than it did in actuality in the movie. So that's... Fair. that's that's my two mm. cents. I, I see what you're saying. I, I see what you're saying, and I, I respect that. But I also feel like that plot point there with Tim not believing it was also sort of a vessel, so to speak, of the descent into madness. Because as he was disbelieving Agreed. her, the two of them would get into more and more arguments and yelling at each other, kind of like what we saw in you know Call Out of Space and things like that. So I think that that disagreement there wasn't solely just to show, hey, Tim doesn't believe this. It's also to show the the minor disagreement, or maybe not minor disagreement, but the the difference in opinion that then gets exaggerated, you know, over that time or whatever. But I mean, I, I see what you're saying. It's like true, thematic true, true. tension versus incidental tension, if that makes any sense. What you're saying, Dan, anyway. Yeah. So another type of tension this movie had was sibling tension. So I did have a quick question for you guys. Do you think it would have been possible for this film to have it made with two kind of childhood friend characters as opposed to a brother and sister? Sure. And I ask this because you know how Tim kind of disbelieves a little bit of what 
Kaylee is saying, I thought to myself, well, what if it was written a little bit differently so that maybe Tim was just always playing with Kaylee. So he got to see some of it, but it wasn't like as direct on him as it was on her. And then at maybe, you know, the scene where Tim shoots the father, maybe he still does that. Maybe he's a little kid and he hears what's going on. So he runs to go help his friend. And that whole situation kind of plays out the same way. And he still makes the promise to kill the mirror with her. Or do you think there is something to be said for a sibling bond in this movie? That's a good question. I, I feel like the movie could have been done pretty effectively as friends. I think that as siblings, the movie is a little bit stronger, like just a little bit, not probably not much. I think it, for all intents and purposes, I think it would have been pretty much just as effective if they were friends and, you know, changed around a couple of things like you had said to kind of reflect that, but it probably would have been effective that way too. Nico thoughts. Yeah. So I, I agree with what Dan said. I think it could have definitely worked. I think that just by having them be siblings, it really just kind of, I guess you could say intensifies the theme of inherited familial trauma, because that is a very clear force in their lives. And not that that couldn't have happened if they were friends. I just think that it works, you know, just a touch better. That was, that was very interesting. Cause the one thing granted they had spent like quite a time apart from one another. But one thing I did kind of note was I almost felt like their interactions between one another were not super brother sisterly. Really? Which can definitely be explained by a number of things in the movie. So I'm not really, really criticizing it for that. But that was just one thing I just kind of noticed because I remember like as kids, you know, they were, they, they seemed very close as children. And it was funny because I thought it was going to be different. Cause remember there's a scene where Kaylee, her fiance calls and she's like, yeah, thanks for calling. Um, I'm super scared having to like meet my brother who's just been let out of the psych ward. And he mouths like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it's pretty funny. That's actually probably the only funny moment in the whole movie. There's another. Which is good. Oh, there's another? There's another, but we'll talk oh, no. about that. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of my thought. That was, that was just a quick, quick little passing thought I had. So now we get to kind of uh, listeners, a question which we uh, had you know, in the pre-meeting had quickly brought up, but decided it would be a good topic for the pod. Is this reflect, is this movie reflective of cosmic or Lovecraftian horror? So I'm going to put on my battle gear. Uh, Dan, what do you think? I, I think it does classify as Lovecraftian. I don't think it's a strong Lovecraftian film, you know, with Lovecraftian horror and in, in that kind of genre in general. A lot of it's sort of descent into madness, which I think very much does happen in this movie, absolutely. And sort of the the unexplained as well. Now, the part that I don't really think is, is all that Lovecraftian is, you know, the, the mirror plays almost more like a demonic kind of thing rather than than some eldritch creature or something like that. But, I mean, as far as the descent into madness, I... I would say it's a Lovecraftian film or Lovecraftian themed. So I'm inclined to agree. I think it's a little bit more Lovecraftian than that, just because the way that I see it is in a lot of cosmic and Lovecraftian horror, when the protagonists are either investigating or dealing with this sort of like sacred object that is otherworldly, the more they get familiar and intimate with it, the more frayed their sanity becomes as they get closer and closer to sort of like getting a, a real quote understanding of what they're dealing with and i think that happens in here because as they get deeper and deeper into the hole that they've dug themselves they get more a more intimate knowledge of just what this mirror can do and what it's done to them as a family so insofar as we have a direct interaction with two characters who start out more or less sane or different flavors of sane, I guess you could say. And we, we see them devolve through their journey to understand this strange object. I would definitely classify that as Lovecraftian. Hmm. Interesting. All right, Justin. I'm just, I'm hang on, I'm finishing strapping on my armor right fast. Oh, yeah. um, uh, okay. So, but before we get started, the term Oculus Infernum, does that mean anything to either of you? The Oculus Infernum is something that's referenced in multiple works of literature, but it is ostensibly like the name as all of our listeners and myself included are well-versed in Latin. 
It's basically a reference to like an eye into hell or something like that. So mm. the father does actually mention once in the movie that he was like, I have seen hell. Now, personally, if my dad tells me that shit, I'm out. But like yeah. if um, <laughs> when he was sitting there, like my demons are many and I have seen hell. I'm like, oh, OK. So here's why I don't think it really, really, really is Lovecraftian. So I would I would say that now hear me out. Things, put your ass on mute, but go ahead. Things are the combination of what they are, right? So, like, judging by the transitive property, you are correct. Yeah. So, I feel like Lovecraftian horror is comprised of multiple elements. I personally feel like the descent into madness is certainly there in the movie, but it didn't really strike me as super Lovecraftian. And the reason why is because. I don't necessarily feel like every movie where a character descends into madness is Lovecraftian. For sure. There's, for sure. There's a lot of um a lot of stories more ancient and powerful that um that have, you know, main characters or just characters in general descend descend into madness when they've, you know, they've touched something or they've come too close to whether it be the gods, not the old ones even, just normal gods, or something else they just weren't meant to handle. Right. So I do, to a certain extent, kind of think that, yes, that is certainly an element of Lovecraftian lore and literature, but I don't necessarily think that everything that has that descent can necessarily be categorized. That makes sense. I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. I still classify it as at least a little bit Lovecraftian because not only do they descend into madness, it's not that's a part of the movie. That is the movie. Yeah, is like the focal point is that descent, uh, but I, I definitely see where you come from, and I I do agree with you. I agree with yeah. you as well. Like it's not, it's definitely not as solidly in the camp as you know, color out of space. But like it, I think it has the elements there. I think I definitely think it has certain elements. I just kind of feel like this was almost more so like a. I think it's also partially based on how the mirror is an actor, and how like. Interesting. I, I feel like when it comes to Lovecraftian themes, yes, there was there's also the struggle against the inevitable. Mm -hmm. But I also do think that even the mirror itself, I almost feel was too comprehensible. Even even as incomprehensible as it was, I feel like it was too comprehensible right. for cosmic horror. It's supposed to be something where like, you know, when you've and this is to kind of throw it back to like the Dunwich horror. You know, in that story, when a guy literally looked through a telescope at or binoculars at the Dunwich Horror, dude lost his mind like instantly. Yeah. yeah. So I think that this was one of those things where it just was maybe, maybe not quite a baker's dozen on on that. But yeah, no, I, I can see the points though both ways. Yeah, I could see it. Now, speaking of things you could also see, what were some favorite scenes? Mm. <sighs> I see with mm. my oculi. Oh, shit. No, you don't. Oh, wow. So um, I'm going to go ahead and lead with the real one here. So my favorite scene in the movie was when um, we could actually see, again, that word see, right? So Sorry, when we uh, saw, so I didn't use see, although a seesaw, both sides go up and down, Ooh. right? Justin. And it Ooh. takes place <laughs> in the present and the past. Yes. And the past. I swear to God. And they flip back and forth. They should call it a scene saw, scene seesaw. You fucking tried. And it's in the future, present, you and past. You soaked it. Oh, I, I did suck. So, <laughs> 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 so here's another cool uh, shot. So there was a cool shot with the plants in the future and the past where we saw in the, I think it started in the present. I said the future. We didn't get that far. <laughs> so in the present where we see the, uh, the plants wilt and die and it immediately shoots back to the past. And in the past, we also see the flowers kind of wilt and die, but no character ever makes a comment about, Oh no, why are these flowers wilting and dying? Like I cannot tell you how much I respected that because I almost feel like too many movies, particularly in any genre. So not particularly, but particularly <laughs> in horror, I cannot <laughs> goddamn tell you how many times I'm, I'm like, bro, I'm not fucking six. This movie doesn't have to explain every last plot point to me. I don't need a wink and a nudge every time something happens that's relevant to the plot. I'm awake. I'm watching the movie. 
honestly, if some people don't get this, it's not even symbolism. If some people don't get the direct fucking message that the plants are dying because of the mirror, hard luck. Like truthfully, hard <laughs> luck. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Come even, take my English classes. We'll help you out. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense in the movie, but I just, it doesn't make any sense why I feel like movies always have to explain every little thing. And I'm also glad that they didn't explain the powers of the mirror. Yeah. That would have been a waste. Agreed. Like, she tried, by she, I mean Kaylee, tried to, like, be like, oh, the mirror can eat a dog or the mirror can, like, do whatever. And we'll talk a little bit about that later, but... I don't know. That's my favorite scene. Dan, how about you, son? Probably my, I'm going to say two favorite scenes maybe. Or, I mean, they're pretty much, they're very similar scenes. Um, there's a point where the lights keep like flickering and the uh, the bulbs keep going out. So Tim goes and changes the light bulb, but changes it a few times. And then he leaves and then Kaylee comes up and sees the light bulb needs to be changed. So she changes the light bulb and she's eating an apple. So to change the light oh, bulb, she puts man. yeah, she puts the apple on the counter, changes the light bulb, puts the light bulb on the counter next to the apple, changes the light bulb again, and then, you know, absentmindedly just reaches her hand for the apple, picks it up, bites into it, but she bites into the light bulb. So there's like shattered glass shards of glass in her mouth and everything and so she like pulls it out and it's it's like really like cringy because it's just like oh like that would hurt so bad and then all of a sudden she realizes like like tim calls her and she realizes she's actually holding an apple and she didn't bite into a into the bulb it's actually was the apple and i thought that was like a cool like what's happening hallucination kind of thing and then very similarly to that five or ten minutes later she kicks over a plant knocks knocks the plant over the plant pot shatters and she's looking at it through her phone her camera and her phone to see if it's real or not so she can't see the shattered pot on the floor so she's like okay that wasn't real so then one of the spirits i think is like haunting her and she takes a piece of glass and stabs the spirit in the neck turns out that was her fiance in in like real life. Her fiance had come to check on her and make sure she was okay. And she thought it was a hallucination. So like at first she didn't even realize like when she, when she saw it was her fiance, she didn't believe it for a while until Tim came down and was like, Oh my God. And, and then she looked at her fiance through her phone and then realized, Holy shit, I really did that. But both those scenes I liked for the same reason of sort of trying to figure out is this real? Is this not real? And both were like, especially the light bulb was really like cringy. Difficult to watch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So those, those were kind of my two favorites. Word, word, word. And Nico. So I, um, I, I just want to say those two scenes are absolutely fucking stellar, Dan. Great choice. Oh, um, my, my two favorite scenes are, um, one, just the beginning where, um, Kaylee is explaining the history of the, I keep wanting to call this a dibbuk, even though I know it's not a dibbuk, but, um, where she's explaining the history of the mirror and what it's done and going into just like the level of impressive detail and redundancy that she's taken and I, I just always love to see when characters in horror movies do their due goddamn diligence so that made me feel good and also just like Karen Gillan's real real pretty um, just my lizard brain there but I also really loved I think this is one of the like more quieter scenes but also one of the scarier scenes when the mother has sufficiently lost her shit and just gone, I guess you could say feral because of the, the mirror and other just psychological warfare. There is a scene immediately after she gets locked and chained up in the oh, um, yeah. master bedroom. And the, the scene cuts down to Kaylee and Tim in their dad's office. And he is... It's almost like he's got a thousand yard stare and he's got this kind of like more gravelly baritone tenor about him. And just his delivery is haunting when he's talking to his kids and he's just like, all right, can't go disturbing mommy. And just like there's a scene where and I'm 
fucking positive this is intentional where Kaylee was asking like oh you know can we get a doctor or something and the remaining light that was in the office just cuts mm-hmm. out and he looks over at her almost as if a like how fucking dare you question what's going on it was just really fucking cool we talked about what we liked and i feel like i've talked about things i didn't like is there anything that you guys maybe didn't like about the movie because I, I feel like i've said my piece on that mm. any anyone else have any thoughts I actually do, but it's not about the the did or didn't like. I have a genuine question for both of you. What did you guys think of the acting in this movie? Because I thought it was fucking stellar. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think there was anything. Competent sounds harsh. But I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was done well. Like, I thought the chemistry between all the characters was just really, really believable, but. Eh, just tiny little See, point. in an ironic twist, I almost feel like the the child actors deserve a lot of credit. Oh, you know, they movie. were fucking great, man. Um, I felt like they had like more emotion than everyone else put together. So I I like them. I thought they were really, really good. I thought for what the movie called for, I thought it was, you know, decently. It's like I was saying, oh, it wasn't acted very well. No, I thought it was I thought it was doing all right. Okay. Okay. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, just wanted to ask that. I don't think there there's anything specifically that I didn't like. I don't mean to say that, oh my God, this movie was perfect, but it I really jumps out at you. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing particularly that I disliked out of I it. I agree. Okay. 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 Well, I agree. How about this? Ooh. What would you do? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> if, um, well, first off, I'm going to break it down for you guys like this. Would you, if the mirror wronged you, would you chase that mirror back down again? Nope. No, and I was actually going to bring this up. I'm wondering <laughs> if maybe that was the mirror's influence. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. No, they, there's a 5D chess there. Sir. Yeah, there is a point in yeah. the movie where it seems like the mirror has a sphere of influence. Correct. So I guess in that case, I sort of debunked my own method or my own uh, thought. However, I feel like, you know, they they were the only ones to crack the mirror. No one else had ever harmed the mirror in any way. So Mm. I feel like that mirror is pretty pissed off. So Mm. I, I kind of feel like maybe it influenced her. And and another thing I realized is I think the mirror really doesn't influence children as much as adults. Because you know, that's true. they were relatively unaffected as kids. Now, there is one scene where Tim is just shown just like as a kid, just like staring blankly in space. So it did affect them somehow, but not anywhere near the extent of of their parents or it does when they are as adults. So I'm wondering if maybe it influenced her a little bit as a kid by just wanting to have her like get the mirror back or something. I don't know. So I have a theory on one point you raised, but let's go ahead and get some insight from our correspondent on the scene, Nico. Nico. Oh, yeah? We come to you live. Okay. All right. I, I'm at the uh, Russell house, and uh, shit is fucked. Any particular questions you got for me, <laughs> Captain? Yes. Yeah, so um, what do you think about Dan's little theory here that the mirror may have influenced Kaylee? to pursue it later on. Oh, yes. My, my sources in the house are telling me that that is a definite possibility. Um, back to you with the weather. All right. Um, it seems to be <laughs> No, hailing... I buy it. I buy it. Oh, damn it. I was going to keep going. It <laughs> seems to be hailing. I disagree with that. So, mm. oh. um, here, so here's my two cents on the matter. I think the reason why the mirror doesn't influence children as much is that it corrupts the insecurities of adults. Now, hear me out. Because the mom has a scar. That's some right. Kingdom Hearts shit, bro. And the scar on her stomach, that is kind of like the root of where the mirror attacks. She viewed it as like ugly. She comments about it, you know, she checks it and all that stuff like that. And the husband honestly doesn't care, but she does. In the mirror, you know, kind of makes her see it as kind of like rotting. And then the mirror also makes her hear her husband say like, oh, you, you ugly cow or something like that. And then she hallucinates that her husband is, you know, having an affair behind her back. All of these things are her own insecurities, right? I don't know, man. I think the husband was actually having an affair. Like a spiritual affair or some 
some shit because he's clearly like enamored and obsessed with the mirror. A- at the very least, it's emotional cheating, I would say. With the mirror? I mean, hey, th- there was some kind of some kind of good looking brown hair, brown eyed woman who we never got a name of, but she was pretty cute. Yeah. Her so name was I, like Mirarella. Oh, I was going to say like <laughs> Reflexstrella or some shit like that. Reflexstrella. Yeah. One of the spirits in the mirror was Marisol. And because he, yeah. he writes her name like all over everything. Maybe and, that's yeah. who it was. The woman's name was Marisol, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, could have been. Well, I don't know. But anyways... I don't. I don't think he was having a affair with a flesh and blood woman. Shall we well, say? Well, sure, sure, yeah. And but I do think the mirror was was playing on those on the on those on those insecurities of hers. I also think that you know the mirror was playing on on the father's thing too, which may have also been you know kind of like, oh, did I get married too soon? I have these kids. Is this really what I want? That kind of thing. I mean, that could also <laughs> be. A, you know, a potential thing as well. And I, that's my theory as to why it doesn't like really mess with the kids because the kids are so innocent. They Mm -hmm. don't really have anything about them to corrupt until, until the future, which is the present. And they do because they're not kids. That tracks. anymore. (laughs) So (laughs) anyways, that, that's my little take on it. Nico. So what you said, you already said you wouldn't track down that mirror. Oh, dude, no, I like leave well the fuck enough alone. I, I nah, would, nah, nah, nah. Like so if fuck you, that. if you had asked me for my help in getting rid of it, I would have joined you. But by my own volition, I would stay the fuck away from whatever the shit that is. See, here's the thing, Nico, and don't take this the wrong way. Take this the right way. You'd kill me. The mayor would immediately be like, "This is hey, like bro. the fourth episode we've had where we established that I'm going to somehow murder you." <laughs> literally, literally, audience, know this. If anything, if if I actually get into a horror movie, the mayor would like start grinding down Nico's psyche. Like, now I will influence your mind to go and kill Justin. Like, if we get like one percent of the way, and Nico, would be we like, both hey, know can, this. Yeah, Nico would be like, "You convince me." You got it. <laughs> I, I didn't even grind down your will yet. No, it's okay. And, and Justin Thanks. would just be like, I understand. This man's got to go. When you got to go, you got to go. Um, <laughs> Pepto so Bismol, bitch. <laughs> Actually, that helps if you're going too much. No, anyway, so <laughs> uh, now I would totally destroy it. Are you kidding me? Blood yeah. in, blood out, bitch. Yep. You, you took my family from me. You, you ruined my life. You sent my brother to a mental asylum. Man wasn't even crazy. Man's not I made hot. him think he was crazy. Quick maths. Nah. The quick maths would have been me plus mirror equals shattered glass. You done that's, though. That's you're damn right. You're damn right. <laughs> As always, Big Shaq has the answer. Because <laughs> of his quick maths. You're done though. But no. <laughs> he also would have been great for fighting the mirror because the temperature keeps rising, but as Big Shaq <laughs> says, <laughs> man's, man's not hot. Man's not hot. <laughs> So literally, would have raised his temperature and he'd have been fine. <laughs> Just like in his jacket, he'd have been completely fine. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. So, so how about that oh. review, eh? <laughs> so yeah, no. In closing, um, we got a little sidetrack there, but yeah, no. I definitely think that uh, I would try to destroy it. Honestly, though, I wouldn't go for no proof. Like Mm-mm. the father's nope. already dead. Nope. The mom's already dead. Here's what we're about to do. We're about to all get in a circle, throw some gasoline, Smash and douse that, that bitch. Yup. I'm gonna set it on fire. If we smash it, maybe the shards could like get into your eye, like the story of the Snow Queen, and then you got to go on a quest. Oh, no, all that! I'll drop like, it we're off just a about to like a mountain or something. Maybe like bury it in lava. Did this just get like fairy tale whimsical? Be fucking Lord of the Rings, toss in Mordor. Ooh. I would toss it in Mordor because that would melt it, which I'm a, I'm a fan of. Now True. speaking of fans of this movie, on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> This has a critic review of 75%, um, and we've got an audience score of 53%. It's got mm. the symbol with the popcorn knocked over. Um, oh. aw. Aww. So let's go ahead and let loose a little bit. Do you agree with the critics? Do you agree with the audience? Are you just a hipster and you're going to go with your own thing? <laughs> Could you hit me up one more time with the, the critic review? Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. The critics gave this one a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow. Okay. That's better than I was expecting. 
The audience gave it a 53. That is worse than I was expecting. But Dan gave it. Dan gave it in the past and is giving in the present. I'm Ooh. giving it Oof. a 70, mm, 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 mm. 77. Moo. Aww. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie. Why did I say moo? I meant to say boo. <laughs> moo. It's because you're having a cow. Are you having a cow, mate? But no. <laughs> I'm really trying to milk this bit. Oh, my God. Too much, and I'm going to need... Anyway, so... <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, Nico, what's the score you're going to give it here? I'm going to give it an 85. I, I really, God damn. I fuck Inflation. with this movie heavy, dude. I, I really, really do enjoy everything about this movie. It's not mind-blowing. It's not, you know, earth-shattering. It's just... It, it sticks to its concept, and it does it really fucking well, I think. True. What about you, Justin? I'm going to have to give it somewhere between a 60 to 65. Mm. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say I'd give it a 63. Well, you still um, liked it better than, than most audience members, apparently. Yeah. I mean, well, here's the thing. In my view, well, I'll get to me last. Um, <laughs> summarize. If you could just quickly summarize your overall thoughts on the movie, Dan. Why don't you go ahead and shoot that down? I thought it was a very well produced movie. By that, I mean production quality and everything. I liked the the concept of the time jumps. I thought that was well done. And I just, I enjoyed it. Okay. Nico, thoughts? If you could give it real quick. Yeah, sure. I love the the construction of the narrative. I love how the themes are explored. And I applaud it for doing something a little bit different. All right. Now, it's funny because that's also why I gave it the score I did. Because I would have rated it lower if it didn't try something. I think, in my opinion, the movie was dry at times. It lacked some of the tension. I thought the the runtime could have been clipped a little bit. An hour 44 for a horror movie is a bit too long. We can cut off some time for the intro and outro. But I still felt like it, it overstayed its, its stay a little bit much. I'm supposed to check out of the hotel at 11. Stay till about 2. So... That's that's kind of my general thoughts on it. But I do want to give a quick shout out to, I agree with you, Dan, that, you know, having such a big mirror would have been, you know, filming that was probably interesting or a challenge even. And also, the film really didn't use any CGI, which I'm always a big, massive fan of. Mm -hmm. I liked the look of the gore. When it was there, I thought it was effective use of gore. And yeah, so all those things kind of gave it a little boost. The story for me was just a little bit generic at times. But it was told in a creative way, which got it points. Mm -hmm. That's my thoughts on Oculus. So does this movie get a recommend from everybody? This is going to be interesting. Yes, definitely. Nico? Oh, for sure. Justin? Justin? I'm going to say pass. You can find something better. Okay. It's um, Okay, okay. It's If you are a fan of horror movies and you're just really trying to watch all you can, sure. This definitely has an interesting quirk with the time twists, but it is not something I would say, oh, you got to see this. It's it's not that movie for me. That's fair. It does not get the unanimous vote. So I'm going to have to keep my stamp in my drawer for the time being. Anyone have any last thoughts before we go ahead and uh, get on out of here? Hey, yo, Karen, hey. if you're listening, what's good? You, you, you pig. <laughs> No, so, he's a cow. Oh, no. <laughs> so if you, uh, you know, if you like what you've heard, or if you want to tell Justin, me, why I'm so wrong, go ahead and uh, give us a holler at Twitter. We're at D-O-T-D Horror. We're also on Instagram under at, D-O-T- at D-O-T-D Horror. <laughs> you can also find us on Facebook. Don't open that door. And yeah, that's been it from uh, Nico, Dan, and your boy Just. Everyone, please watch out for your mirrors in your house. I actually don't have any mirrors. What about your bathroom? It's not a mirror. It's a reflective surface, bro. So everyone watch your back um, around mirrors for, for the time being. As always, on a more serious note, we really want everyone to be safe. Do what you have to do, but keep yourself safe, healthy at all times. Try your best. Everyone, we want you all to have a great night. And as always, ladies and gents, uh, don't open that door. Good night.